Here we are back in the garden a couple of days later. Now that the flight area is secure, we need to look at how we are going to get the conditions right for the butterflies to survive. There are three main factors to consider with butterflies. Temperature, humidity and light levels. So let's look at the temperature first. As a general guide, you should try and keep the flight area 24 to 28 Celsius during the day and 12 to 18 Celsius at night. But having said that, there is quite a lot of flexibility in those numbers. For example, most butterflies are fine with an overnight temperature of 8 to 10 Celsius. But you need to consider that your plants might not be okay with this. And during the day, butterflies will be okay with the temperature dropping to 18 or 20, as well as peaking at 30 or 32, as long as this is just occasionally. So you will need to heat or ventilate the greenhouse at the appropriate times to maintain the temperatures. Next is the humidity. You have to remember that most of these butterflies come from the rainforests and tropical locations. So they will need a high humidity of 60-80% to 80 at all times, or they can quickly dehydrate and die. Filling your flight area with plants and soil will help to increase the humidity, but you will need to regularly water and spray the flight area and monitor the conditions. And finally we have the light levels. This factor is just as important for the plants as it is for the butterflies. You need good light levels to keep the nectar plants flowering, as well as to keep the butterflies feeding. If the light levels are too low, then the butterflies won't fly, which in turn means they won't feed. One way to solve this is to increase the temperature a little on dull days, and this will encourage more activity. So let's look at the most basic setup of what is needed to maintain and monitor the conditions. You can find links to all of these items in the video description. Firstly, we have the humidity meter. This one was £6.79 and it's fairly straightforward. At the moment you can see the greenhouse is too dry at around 40% humidity. Then we have the maximum minimum thermometer which was 995. As you can see it shows the maximum temperature the greenhouse has been, the current temperature of the greenhouse and the minimum temperature. This is a really important thing to have so you can monitor what's been happening in your greenhouse when you haven't been there and then you can adjust any heating or venting if you need to. Next we have a simple socket timer, which is £7.49. You simply twist the dial to the correct time and push in the 15 minute segments as needed. This is perfect if you only want to heat the greenhouse at night, or you can have two different heaters on different timers one running through the night at 15 Celsius and one running through the day at 25. Next we have the heater, which was 4495. This one is a 2 kilowatt electric heater, which is ideal for a small flight area such as this one. For bigger greenhouses you might need a 3 kilowatt. This particular model operates as a fan when it's not heating, so it provides good air circulation it also has a 1 kilowatt setting if you want to use a bit less energy or only need a small amount of heat. And finally, a weatherproof box for the electrical plugs and sockets to go in. This one was 13 99 And it's always really important to take care with electrical items in a greenhouse as you're going to be spraying water so it can be very dangerous. So now let's get the heater set up. This model doesn't have any temperatures on the dial so the best thing to do is to turn the heat up to full power, leave it running for 10 minutes and you can see your temperature is reached and what the heater can manage. Then you can simply dial down the heater, bit at a time, until you find the temperature that you want. In this setup, until we get the butterflies, we're going to set the heater at 16 degrees. This will keep the plants warm at night and allow them to establish. Once we get the butterflies, which should be in early June, the overnight temperature should be high enough to not need any additional heating and we will then set the heater to 24 celsius and use the timer so that it runs from 9am to 6pm and just heats during the day when the butterflies need it. The next thing you need to check is the back of the heater. This particular model is okay but some have much more open grills and these can be very dangerous to the butterflies causing them to be sucked into the heater. You may need to add an additional layer of wire mesh to the back of the heater if this is the case. So the last thing to do 
is to place the thermometer and the humidity meter in a shaded position in the flight area. And what we are going to do is monitor that over the coming days and make any adjustments if necessary. So let's look at the total cost of all the items in this episode and see how much we've spent so far. You can find the links in the description of all the items that we've used. This brings the total so far to £114. That's all for this episode. Next time we will start looking at the plants required and this should begin to improve the humidity levels. So I'll see you then.